What's good, folks? And welcome to another episode of the Cover One Film Room, presented, of course, by Cover One itself. I'm one of your two hosts in the film room this evening, Anthony Prohaska, joined as always by Eric Turner. Yeah. Sometimes I do a little melancholy intro. Sometimes I'm a little even keel. Tonight I'm pretty excited. My voice may be louder. I feel like I'm louder, even though I'm probably not. Maybe I am. I don't know. Eric's got a smile on his face, which Let's is go. rare at times. Eric, we're pretty <laughs> excited. Eric, why why are we excited in tonight's episode? Is tonight's episode like just like a regular film room episode, or is it maybe like a little more special? Maybe. No, it's very special. You know, we uh we have our our, our guy, cornerback for the Buffalo Bills, Kair Elam, joining us in the film room tonight, guys. Kair, welcome into the film room. This has been a long time coming. You know, this, it's been a few weeks trying to get on the same schedule, but Kair, we appreciate you joining us tonight in the film room. Thank you for inviting me, Eric. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely, man. This is the kind of that lull in the offseason, right? So I'm sure, you know, you have some plans, you have some things you want to – you know, do before the long season starts. So I want to get right into maybe what that is. Maybe you're going on vacation for a week or so, or maybe you're going somewhere visiting family before the season starts. But when it comes to football, like what did last season teach you, Kair, when it comes to this little lull right before the season? Like what did last year teach you um, to, to as far as preparation goes leading into the season? Uh, I would probably just say, how to be more intentional, you know. I mean, I, I always been a guy who, you know, ball like super duper uh work ethic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Always driven, always passionate about what I do, you know what I mean? I love the ball. But I think it you, hard work doesn't always get you where you want to be, you know what I mean? Right. So I really I think I really last season really taught me how to be intentional, like, you know, really intentional how to improve my technique, how to really focus mm -hmm. on, you know what I mean, have patience. You know what I mean? Everything's not going to happen when you want it to. But, you know, just staying ready, staying prepared. I think that's that's the biggest thing. Me just, uh, I mean, I always had the work ethic, like I said, in the preparation, you know. The, uh, but that doesn't always get you where you want to be. You know what I mean? Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it's, it's really just figuring out, like, all right, you had to go through some things to in order to get to where you want to be. From, you know, obviously coming from a – top tier school in the SEC at the University of Florida and then making that transition in the NFL. One of the pieces that always gets talked about for rookies is like that transition to an NFL game as a rookie. There's a bit of a longer schedule. It's a different rhythm and routine to it. What was that like for you as a rookie? Like you're, cause you're coming from again, top tier competition mm -hmm. with who you played with, who you played against. So it's somewhat mm -hmm. easier for you, you know, based on the school you came from the level you played at, but talk about what that transition to NFL routine and NFL practices. And in addition to the technique pieces and everything you talked about, what is that like as a rookie, you know, getting adjusted to life on and off the field in the NFL? Uh, um, I mean, I feel like it's a little bit different for everybody. I mean, depending on, you know, where you were drafted or, or, or who you, who you are, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I had, I thought I had a good grasp, you know what I mean? I have my father who played seven mm -hmm. years, you know, my uncle who played, he played four or going on four. And then I had, you know, Bill Parcells, another mentor I could talk to about, you know what I mean, the life of a rookie and going, coming into it. Um, but, you know, it, it's definitely a little bit, a lot different when you have to go through it yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it was something that, you know, it was it didn't hit me by surprise, but it was like, it, it made me uh, really man up and really show me how to, you know, become a man, honestly. Because I feel like cause you don't have as much freedom as you do in the NFL. You know what I mean? You have a lot more freedom, but also it's more cutthroat. So, you know what I mean? You have to, you know, really just strap on your boots and, you know, really, you know, like, okay, it's, it's go time. Like, and this is your dream, but also at the end of the day, like, in reality, like, you know what you want out of it, but you, you, you had to find a way to. Right. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. There's, as you said, there's maybe more time, but it is cutthroat. It's a job now. So right. there's a lot of more responsibility with that. And, you know, RJ asked a great question, having to do res resp responsibility and technique. He wants to know uh, what the transition was like from a man-heavy scheme at Florida to a zone-heavy scheme, which kind of is in line with my question, and maybe what what techniques were different at the college level than to the NFL level? You know, is there yeah. more attention paid to that? What type of uh, transition technique-wise um, from college to the NFL? Uh, so for me personally, it was me like not being as physical receivers because in, in college, like like a lot of my tape, I would scooch and I could collision receivers and, and mm. press. I could put my hands on the receiver from zero all the way to, to the ball was like 
either a pass breakup or an interception. Like, you know what I mean? So it was just not, you know, using my hands as much and relying all solely on my technique and feet. Um, you know, staying square, like my coach John Butler, we preach that like every single day. Like, you know, stand square, weaving, you know, um being able to uh transition and get out of your break efficiently without even having to touch the receiver things like right. that um so i mean from uh, coming from the, a man system all i played was man and press quarters and uh match third and then all that like it was a complete different defense but you know i mean i was chosen you know because they knew that i could i could find a way to to really evolve my game to you know mm-hmm. the match system so I yeah mean, i mean I, I required more and more reps. Like I feel like I got more comfortable as the season went on, and more reps I, you know, I was able to to gain. But I mean, it, it was something. It's part of my job description. You know, I have to do it, and right. I want to be great. So you know, I, I gotta you know, figure it out. You know what I mean? But I think the biggest transition was just not being able to touch the receivers as much. And right. that's, I would say that was that was a transition for me. Yeah, and you said you know it's more of that scooch technique where or a collision technique where you could use your hands, but also use your feet at the line of scrimmage. Uh, whether you're a man in zone where, you know, you could, you know, motor mirror out is what we call it, where you're that scooch technique where you're up at the line of scrimmage, but you're kind of backing up until yeah. you, that route, it kind of develops and you can read it and say, okay, now he's releasing outside. Now I can transition, get my hips open. Um, so I'm sure it was, had, had a lot to do with, as you said, being patient, right? Kind of being mm-hmm. patient near the line of scrimmage, not necessarily always triggering your feet or triggering your hands, reading it from the shoulders up before, your body starts to get in motion. So that's a big, that's a big transition. I mean, for a guy like yourself with your athleticism, skill set, and feet to be up at the line of scrimmage, always getting physical with guys at the college level and and excelling at that. And then having to train your body and your muscle memory at the next level in a whole new scheme. That's, that's a lot of responsibility and that's a lot of technique change. For sure. But you know, but I, I I'm confident that I could do it now. So awesome. you know, I just need to get the grasp of it. But you know, I mean, I appreciate you know my coaches and you know my head coaches really taking the time to always you know speak to me and always you know make sure I wasn't being too hard on myself for not getting it right away. You know what right. I mean? Because I think that was the biggest me just being so tough. Like I was like, nah, I got to get it now. I got to get it now. And I got to be a day one start. I got to be all pro right now. Like that was my biggest thing. And it was just like I was adding a lot of more uh, stress to myself. Uh, than I really needed to be, and you know, it, and it caused me to play a little bit slower. But now, like once, you know, I got more reps, and especially the OTAs and minicamp, like really, like to my feet and my, you know, in my off-season preparation, it was like it clicked for me. Kyrie, you you mentioned in the piece what you just said now, like about like the stress and like the mental side of it. Talk about yeah. how I, I feel like so much of football because of it. It, it, like every you guys are big and strong and fast and athletic and it's so mm. much of it is like the physical side of the game but talk about that mental piece especially like being at the highest level of football there is like what what does that workload look like mentally for you when it comes to preparation or studying opponents or you know learning those coverages and putting it in application practical application on the field just talk about like the mental side of the game for football because I feel like the the stress piece of it, let alone the like the intelligence and the IQ you guys work with, I feel like that doesn't get talked about enough for just like the kind of toll it takes on your brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at like so I, so this off season, I've been studying a lot of you know really really corners. You know what I mean? Like Darius Slay, uh, Bradbury, mm-hmm. Stephon mm-hmm. Gilmore, like guys like that who are, who are year seven and up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those guys. And like their athleticism, you can see that athleticism is fading, but their game has like gone up, like they're right. in, like improved. So I'm like watching guys like that, and I'm just like, man, like it's like technique and fundamentals. Like this is what really separates, you know, the the good from the yeah. great. Yeah. So like really, like I've been really just trying to like add that to my game, you know what I mean? Because I was always a film type of guy, but I was always film like watching the offense, breaking down the offense. Is like okay. Mm. These plays, these plays, okay, mounted, what he likes to do, all this. But I've never really sat back and like studied like other corners. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. Yeah. So, like, it was just like, I think that's what helped me mature, like, as the season went on as well. Cause it was like, all right, what can I add to my game? Or what, like, my coach is explaining how I should be playing it, but it's not clicking right away. Like, so it was like, okay, now I got, when Trey White came back, I got to see him play, you know, how to stay yeah. square, how to, how to burst out of your break. And, and you know, I mean, not not like scooch and all like it was just 
it was good to see. You know what I mean? It was it was awesome to see. Now you said you know you studied a lot of corners and you are studying a lot of corners this off season. Um, but I do want to know during the season, like how do you study? This is the film room. We always ask guys yeah. when they come into the film room, how do you prepare film wise going into a game? I mean, what what situations yeah. are you studying? What are you studying about the receiver formations? Like, what's your preparation look like when it comes to film? So. Okay, so 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 you saying like a like a week before the game, like right going after going into the game. Yep. So really, I'm studying. I'm really studying their best players first, first and foremost, because it's a matchup based league, and I know the balls majority of the balls are gonna go to their best player without doubt. So I'm studying their top two targets off the bat. What do they like to do? You know how they handle press. Um, are they uh, choppy? Do they are they choppy out of their out of their break? Are they you know, stick and go, um, what they do at the line of scrimmage, are they physical, do they line like hands, um, things like that. Um, and then I would study, you know, third down because that's key right then and there. Um, I think, like, that's, that can change the ball game right then and there. And then, like, after that, I'm just – I'm watching, like, okay, what's their scheme like? What's their run game? Like, what's their run game scheme like? Because corner, like, you got to come up and tackle, like, without a doubt. Especially like, in this so. system. Yeah. For sure, without a doubt, because we often we play off, you know, eight yards, and they and our receiver cracks. Like you got to be there to fit that, you know, fit that gap. So, um, so that's really how my how my process goes. And throughout the week, like okay, so, so, so we say we play Sunday, and we got to play next Sunday. So Monday, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I mean, that's that's I watch the film of the previous games of the the game we just played, and then when I go home, I'm watching I'm watching third down because mm -hmm. that's that's it's money gotta, down. And that's money down. You know what I mean? That's make a play, get off the field, change the game, give Josh back the ball, let's go score. So then I'm watching third down. Okay, boom, boom. I'm watching, I'm watching our top two targets. Uh um uh Tuesday. Then Wednesday, I'm watching, you know, their the uh first, second down plays. Mm -hmm. Thursday, I'm watching run game. And then then after that, I'm just watching everything my coach is telling me to do. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Um, but throughout the week, I, I come home. I come home. I already watch practice at the facility already, so okay. I'm just watching them into, you know, watching the uh, opponent. Ooh. All right, we got well, we got a super chat here, Kyer. Sometimes people donate to the show or they ask a question and they attach money to it. And we the rule is on the show we got to bring it up. Got to bring it is. up. So right. White Towns King, one of our regular watchers and supporters, we appreciate him every week. Appreciate you being here, White Towns. Appreciate the donation. This is for you, Kyer. Why Towns King says, with your experience guarding Kyle Pitts in college, uh, will Kyer you? Will you be asking for the Travis Kelsey matchup this year? You don't necessarily have to. Answer I'd like that. that. I, 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 do I do like that. Like it. I don't want. I don't want to put you too much. Will like I be it. asking for the for the? Yeah. Do you like? Will you I mean, be asking I, for like that Travis Kelsey matchup when the Bills play the when you guys play the Chiefs? Like, is that? Yeah. Or, and you've got a transition too as well. Like, yeah, how I much do you that. want that? Like, yeah, definitely do you want that number one matchup? Definitely, definitely, we want that. You know what I mean? I'm. I'm Completely confident in that in that right now. Um, like I said, like that's not my decision. Like right. I can't, you know what I mean? I can't go to McDermott, hey, Coach McDermott, like, yeah, can you put my, that's not <laughs> I that's don't not have that cash, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Now if he brings it up, then for sure. Like I'm I'm, I'm Let's ready. Go. For, you know what I mean? But whatever coach tell me to do, I'm I'm, I'm you know what I mean, I gotta do, but for sure. Without a Absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. Towns, thank you, Kair. That's uh that's that's true, man. You're a competitive guy. If they ask you yeah. to, to to man up against Kelsey, why not? You have again, you have the size and skill set. And, and as White Towns talked about, you know, you've played against uh, similar type players that are very talented. So right. with that said, Kair, let's jump into the film. We have about four plays for Kair to break down. This is the uh first uh play of this series. It's against the Dolphins. So Kyrie's to the bottom of the screen, and Kyrie, I just want you to talk about the coverage here and really what you're supposed to be doing post snap, um, and why you, maybe you didn't do that in this quarter's coverage look. Mm. Yeah, so right here, yeah, it's a, a quarter's look right here. I'm down pressed. I see the the uh, the motion of the W receiver. Uh, I think that's what Trent Sheffield. Sheffield, yeah. Sheffield, yeah. He's on our team now. I mean, he's a, Big strong guy, great blocker. Um, right now, I see then I see the tight end. I think it's what is it? What is that? Can you go back? Was it pistol or was it gun? It was gun. It was gun. So right now, I see quarters. I see 
uh, Trent really coming over to to really block me. Yeah, I'm really supposed to bail, but right. my, I'm supposed to bail to see two going vertical, but two's not screaming doing going vertical. So really now I'm like, okay, cool. He's coming. He's chopping his feet. Like I don't have the safety over the top. It's quarters coverage. So yeah. now I can go, you know, be aggressive and make a play. Aggressive, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like I didn't know this play was coming, but as as he was as he was motioning, I was like. I was like, nobody's threatening me vertically to open my hips up and bail out. You know, I mean, you see two screaming down the field. Like, I don't have the vertical of two or anything. And I just see him, like, he's not going flat. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not a flat route. He's coming straight at me and he's chopping his feet right now. So that's where I really, I triggered late. I'm really supposed to pick Sixes ball right here. Yeah, you would have housed that too. <laughs> yeah, I was really angry about that. That's where I think I punched the ball up at the end. No, that was a great play. <laughs> but um, I was happy. I, was, I think that was the second. I was the second down in a critical moment. I think two minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. No start coming down. It felt like a movie. But that was a uh, that was a quarter concept. I just really, you know, I just really tried to just go make a play, man. Change the game. So you kind of answered my my question on this was going to end up being like, is this something that you had like keyed in on on tape or were you reacting no. in the moment? So you answered that. No, I've never awesome. seen this. I never seen this play on tape to be honest with you. All right. So kind of, so to talk about that that piece like within. Like that, like you said, like trying to make a play, like talk about how that happens usually throughout like the course of a game where, you know, again, you're supposed to be dropping its quarters coverage, but you just feel it. You read it like how important to you and your game are your instincts to kind of just see something and trigger and react to it like you did here. Mm -hmm. I, th I feel like earlier throughout the season, it was like I was sure the that something was going to break in front of me or was going to happen, but I wasn't going. And my coach, mm -hmm. it was like it got to a point like my coach was like, like you have the talent, like like that's not the issue. Like it's right. just you stopping yourself, holding yourself back. Mm. He just told me to go when you know, like go when you know. So I right here, I seen him. I seen him really like stuttering his feet. Like Sheffield stuttering his feet, he's not coming vertical, he's not going flat. He's just coming straight at me, coming to block mm -hmm. me. And then I seen Tyreek really just he didn't really attempt to run a route. No, not at all. Like, just, like I don't even know what you would call that. Um, yeah, he just stabbed like up to the line of scrimmage and then came back. Screen, it, yeah. yeah, I feel like exactly. he was trying to run a tunnel screen. He would have came at me a little bit more and then pushed uh, towards the ball, but he just kind of just stayed there. So I really just triggered to make a play on the ball. No, that's that's great to hear because again, you know, as that rookie season, it's tough. You know, you're you're trying to mentally prepare for so many things, and as you said, you're trying to be so perfect with everything and on top of things. But there's there's got to be a point in time, and I think you know, late in the season, we saw that where. You just had to go play. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Just play fast, and that, that that's important in this defensive scheme, right? Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So second play, this is your interception versus uh, the Dolphins. And, uh, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, the transition from a man-heavy scheme in college to a zone-heavy scheme in Buffalo. Um, this is the interception uh, with the Dolphins backed up, and it's one of the plays where I think – what sets you apart from some of the other corners that have been in the system the last few years is your athleticism, your, your length, um, your overall speed and, and footwork. And on this play, we see some of that recovery ability here. Um, and I think if there's a different corner at the top of the screen, maybe the quarterback, uh, you know, is easily dropping this into the honey hole, especially with Dean Marlowe backup safety uh, in that deep path. But I want to know what was, what is the most important trait, in your eyes, in, in, in your mind, in this scheme? Because this scheme, we've studied it in and out for several years now. But when it comes to zone, what would you say is the most important trait in zone in this scheme? Uh, Man, I mean, to be successful in this scheme, I really think it's really just being explosive in and out of your breaks. Because mm -hmm. zone, you're not meant to – Take away the hitches, the curls, you know what I mean? The yeah, the 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 quick, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's really like, okay, boom, I'm playing cover three. And, and I guess knowing route concepts as well. I would think knowing route concepts and being explosive in and out of your break. Mm -hmm. Because it was like you're gonna you're gonna react a little bit later than the receiver because you had a responsibility. You see two to two to one, or you know what I mean, you have to you have a you have a you have to bail. So it's like, okay, boom. You know, okay, you see two eliminate. Now you can go you no know, to drive number one. Or in this case, we're playing cover two right here. So now, like, uh, I think he motioned out, right? Number one, number one motioned out. I think it was uh, 11, Cedric Wilson, right? He motioned out to number one. So I was like, 
his his split so wide, he's going wide. something inside, right? Inside, yeah. So right away, once he takes this first initial step right here, I'm already seeing where two is going. So I'm thinking right now, I'm either China seven, uh, uh, seam seam by number two, and uh, so right now. Uh, I'm peeking at the quarterback, but I'm kind of feeling two right now. He's he's my new number one. Mm -hmm. So, now, like, when you're playing cover two, you want to be deep to short. Mm -hmm. And I know it's third and 18, so I'm like, okay, cool. So, if I eliminate the deep throw right now and keep everything in front of me, I can rally and tackle it. So, I'm not really yep. worried about uh, getting into a shuffle right now because it was like anything throwing quick in front of me, like, I have to try and break, but I can, I can give up uh, – uh, 10 yard flat route and go make the tackle. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, he has eight yards to make the first down. So right now I just really play, try to play deep to high right now. And then I really, because I've seen a quarterback's shoulders tilt. When his shoulders tilt up, you know, the ball is going to go vertically. Like mm -hmm. uh, people like, I don't know if people yeah. kind of read that, but if you see his shoulders, his shoulders tilt up. Now I'm speeding up a little bit because I know the ball is going vertically down the field. And then, um, really, when he steps up and tilts his shoulder up, I'm speeding up. Like, I'm trying to go to zero speed right now. And then, um, you know, he tried to test the, you know, the hole, like you said, the honey hole, like mm -hmm. right in between. Um, so, a corner's really cover two uh, coverage. He's supposed to guard uh, zero to 18 and mm -hmm. high to low. And so, really, right now, I think there's like a 20 yard ball, but mm -hmm. um, me being able to recover and, and, and just have ball skills to make. You know, go and high point the ball. I think that was just, just instincts right there. I, I had like four different questions for this play, and you answered all of them with everything you just said. <laughs> okay, so like, you I love it. I love it. Oh, you're you're <laughs> crushing it, man. Um, one piece. So when this happened, like we were we were we were breaking this down on film and tape, and then obviously just watching in the game, and you articulated everything that happened perfectly here. But mm -hmm. what, was this play for you, like this interception, like really as easy as it looks? Like you're saying you're like, so again, you're in cover two. You know yeah. the situation on third and long. And then on top of it, like you, you mentioned earlier, like knowing the concepts and knowing the route combinations, like there is no, there's not even anyone underneath to like potentially threaten you or hold you to try and like nail down. So you're just sitting there and you're not going to cover grass. And like you said, like you just sink. Like from our – from the vantage point and for the fans watching on the broadcast, like – you're just yeah. dropping back, reading the QB, and you make a play like, and everything you articulated obviously shows the science of it and how you got to that. But when it happened instantaneously, was it, was this was this interception really as easy as it looked? Because it looks like their combination didn't threaten you, and you were just like, nah, like I, I'm, I'm covering I'm covering high to low, and you don't even have anybody threatening me yeah. low. I'm just gonna I keep mean, honestly, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna crash, but then my eyes are are on the cue, most importantly, because in cover two, you want to be able to break. And and be set as the quarterback's getting set in his drop, right? Mm -hmm. But like, like I said, there's nobody, there's nobody in my flat. Like Cedric Wilson is literally running an in route, so now I know I can sink a little bit. And then when I, once I see the quarterback's eyes and his shoulder tilt up, I mm -hmm. can speed up. You know what I mean? So yeah, I've, of course I'm not gonna guard. I'm not gonna guard a fade ball in cover two, like looking at the quarterback. No, but I know I could be there to affect the throw and make it throw a high from either for my safety to pick it or for me to tip it. So right. it was just like. I didn't – I was like – when I seen it, I was like, bro, don't – I'm like, don't – I'm like, yes, throw it. But like, <laughs> Dude, that is yeah, not <laughs> watching it, I was like, there's no way he's going to throw that ball. Yeah, I was like, I, he threw I, that ball. Like, For sure. But, I mean, I was just – I mean, I was just super excited when he threw it because I was like, it's a chance for me to go make a play now, like show up yeah. my ball. Hell yeah. Would you say, like, what game in the season, real quick, what game in the season do you think it started to click and slow down for you where you started processing not only – the route combinations and everything, but understanding the job, the techniques, the assignments, and everything kind of just came together. Is there a point in the season where you thought that, okay, the, the green light came on? A point in the season when the, when the green light came on? I think it was probably like, it was maybe the second. I was and we know it's not going to be just perfectly I was, I was, linear, I was, I was right? Practicing, <laughs> I was practicing really well this Steelers game right here, like the, okay. before this game and everything. And then I got hurt the second play of the game. Mm -hmm. So, it was, I, I mean, it was starting to slow down a lot. And then I got hurt That's and awesome. it was like, okay, boom, like I got to. And then you had to deal with that. Way, for... I got to find a way. I got to find a way to, right. you know I mean, to, to, to prove myself, you know what I mean, still. So it was like, I got to play through it. But I feel like it slowed down. It started to slow down probably like a game five or four. That's All right. when it really started. But when I really felt like, oh, I can trust myself and play fast, 
it was really probably that second uh, Dolphins game, the second the second game at home. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, what I figured. For sure. that's when we were like, okay, because I remember Anthony and I did a film room after that game, and I, I'm pretty sure we threw you in with two other guys in that game as players of the game and just guys that stood out when we watched yeah. the film. Um, but this play, uh, this is another one year interceptions, but I want to talk about what happens prior to the snap, not necessarily after the snap, because yeah. a lot of fans think that how far off you play on a wide receiver, how tight you are inside, outside leverage. A lot of fans think that you kind of have that leeway, but really within the structure of a play, that defensive stem is what we'll call it. That defensive stem is really kind of ingrained within the play concept and, and play overall. But there is some leeway given to you, players. So I want you to talk about maybe some of the, the purpose behind that, showing you know up at the line of scrimmage, then kind of bailing off like you see here, um, guys. Um, talk about that, Kyrie, and how much, you know, if there's time spent doing that, like how does that come about? Uh, but, you know, pre to post snap, like you initially you're up at the line of scrimmage, then by the time the ball snapped, you're off. Kind of talk about that preparation and, and what that means to the defensive play. For sure. I mean, right here, I'm just really trust guys. You know, majority of the time we come out, we uh we come out and we're we align press, but nine times uh, like six mm -hmm. times out of ten, we're either bailing on a third or a fourth, you know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. you know sometimes we'll throw in you know man and press and play man. So really just giving that illusion to the quarterback, not, not trying to get read right now. You see, uh, I think that's who is at the top, Demar, doing a good job of yep. bailing out there, even though he's playing cover two, he's showing in the box. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I feel like disguising plays a big part in in um. And especially a young quarterback like Kenny Pickett, I'm young too, but I mean, he's not experienced as a Tom Brady or, you know, a Pat sure. Mahomes. So, but like just giving them an illusion that we was playing man here. So you see DeMar playing like showing like a single high and right. Jaquan doing a good job showing like it's like it's cover one. And then me trying to give that illusion like, okay, I'm, I'm off and inside by myself. Right. And I, I'm, I'm sure he peaked that because I kind of peaked his eyes just looking mm -hmm. at me a little bit pre snap. So I'm like, okay, I'm giving them an illusion that I'm playing off, off and inside by one. And then DeMar's doing a good job of disguising as well. It's all core, guys. That's why mm -hmm. Coach McDermott always preaches, like, all the time, like, you're 111. Like, but, you know, you have to do your job in order for all 11 for us to work. So, you know, even Taryn doing a good job of showing, you know, outside leverage cover one. Like, you know what I mean? But yep. in, reality, in reality, we all got our eyes on the quarterback. And me, I was trying to show off and inside, like I'm playing off, off man. But then I, at the snap, I kind of come down so I can get a collision and make him go inside towards my safety help, you know what I mean, cover two. And mm -hmm. I'm a flat defender, but right now I get a, a piece of him and I force him inside. He's running a fade, but, you know, yep. he has, a, he has, a, he has a, a go inside of me, which is a good thing, you know, yep. in cover two, because you don't want him to throw that You're supposed to funnel him inside, right? Yeah. But, well, if you can, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I guess I kind of, like, discouraged him a little bit when he see me come down as he's mm -hmm. running full speed, and it kind of knocked him off his route a little bit. He stems inside and he has a stem back inside. To restack but, uh, you, yep. Right. So now I have nobody in my flat. So like, like I said, I can sink a little bit more. But as I go to uh, to reroute him, I like kind of burst back because I see get my eyes on the quarterback, right? And if you if you freeze it right there, mm -hmm. he's staring down Deontay Johnson. No doubt. He's staring, and there's nobody in my flat. So what I'm like, what am I supposed? What else am I supposed to do? Sink. You know what I mean? It's time to go make a play at this point. Play high to low, right? And especially play in this type of coverage, play high to low. Facts. And then now. As you play it a little bit slower, his show like you can see his shoulder doesn't point up, so each isn't point up. So you think it's intermediate or quick, but he really tries to throw one ball like a hole shot, like mm -hmm. in between the hole. And um, I really got to give credit to you know the whole defense uh, scheme because without the disguise, he probably wouldn't have thrown this ball because he would probably think it was cover one and I was beat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I got to just give the credit to you know the the defense right here. It was but, choreographed nicely, right, Ant? Yeah, it was beautifully choreographed. And Kyrie, you spoke so well, like highlighting all those pieces. I want to dive a little more from a detailed perspective into like specifically what you were doing. So Eric mentioned, and you know, again, things are baked into the coverage and you're talking about the design and the choreographed piece. What you're doing on this where you initially, you know, you're showing up at the line and then you drop back and then you come, you're playing games with, with leverage and inside and trying to make Deontay Johnson think different pieces. How much of this, like what you're doing on this play for you specifically, how much of this is like, hey, this is what you're doing on this play versus how much mm -hmm. of it is you being like, I think I know how I can like mess with him a little bit. Like how mm -hmm. much is it? You, no, like this, this, is, this was this was 
I mean, it wasn't in the play call for me to stem down on a snap. Like, that's that's not how you're supposed to play cover, too. Yeah. But it's me trying to affect the quarterback in order to get him, to bait him into throwing the ball how he did. You know what I mean? Because yep. right now, I'm like, I'm not really worried about him running past me, like I said, because I'm a yeah. cover two defender. I'm a I'm a curl flat defender. You know what I mean? I'm a I'm a force I'm a force player in the run game. Run game. Yeah. It really, um, I think it was just it's just him, you know, taking the bait. I guess you know what I mean. I was able to just show off my ball skills and make a play. And is is in this instance is it is this kind of you just applying like general like football IQ and kind of messing with Pickett or versus how much is it? You just, you know, like you talk about, you're both young, but you trying to take advantage of a young QB with some mind games, or is this potentially something you saw on tape and you thought if you presented this look, you could bait him into this? Um, honestly, I just felt like I just need to give a different look. And, you know, sometimes you, mm -hmm. you have to align and play how it's supposed to be. But, you know what I mean? As the game went on, you know, you can't give the same look. It's just like boxing. Like, if you give somebody a right jab, the whole match, you're like, okay, I'm going to give you a counter too. So I was just really just trying to implement. I think it was like the last maybe 30 seconds of the second of the first half. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking they're really trying to get go down and get some points on the board. Yeah, right? chunk play. He, and he's aggressive. Like, and I've seen that on film. He he's not afraid to to fit the ball in anywhere. Like he feels like he has an arm like Mahomes, which he's a great quarterback with a great arm. But you know, what I mean, he. I mean, he feels like he's that guy, which mm -hmm. which makes him which makes him good. Like good player. He's gonna be a good absolutely. Player. But that's so yeah, tremendous because it's like it's like using you're literally using like the situation and kind of using his own nature against him by yeah. you know, combining all those pieces with what you're doing pre and post snap yeah. and then how you play it to bait him into that. That's very yeah, smart. He's not a check down, Charlie. He's a, he's a he's right. A and so. and what I like about this, we talked about the choreography real quick, and we got one more play after this. You know, the choreography, the 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 dance before the snap is so important, especially. Uh, given the situation, as you said, in the game. But also, you got to think about it. Hamlin, Jaquan Johnson, um, again, you're to the you know the strength of the passing of the formation. So, again, you, you understood not only the player, but also the scheme in your assignment. Um, and, I mean, you can't really blame Pickett for taking this shot, again, with the players in this at, at the safety level and what they were showing prior to the snap. It just – that's why – prior to the snap so much is happening that a lot of fans don't you know really get to hear about or talk about which is why i'm glad you brought all that up um mm -hmm. when it comes to and it's and most of it is from the shoulders up and understanding that player and comes from your your film study and comes from you understanding you know pick it and you know the the scheme of playing cover two kind of you know coming down from that you know, that off position and forcing that receiver to go inside you so that he has to widen his stem, which takes more time, throws off the rhythm, everything, all these little details and nuance go into a play that in the end you make look so easy because of your athleticism. And, right. but so much of it, Kair comes from the shoulders up when you say, right, for sure. Like all right. Said, so a lot of it is, is mental. No doubt about it, man. That's that's why we appreciate you coming in here into the film room with us. And this is another one of those plays that, uh, from the shoulders up, this is your interception, huge interception in the red zone versus the Chiefs. We know the Chiefs are if they're probably the best team when it comes to the red zone and have been since Andy Reid's gotten there. Um, big interception. You got to show off some again some of your length on this play, um, but this one's a little different because uh, I want you to talk about the coverage um, and then kind of what happens as Patrick Mahomes goes into that that scramble drill mode and what you're supposed to do when that happens. Um honestly, so I'm the force player like you said, like like you know, I'm supposed to be the force player, right? But mm -hmm. once Mahomes goes to scramble, you know, it's it turns into plaster drill. So if for a lot of people who don't understand, you know, plaster drill is you want to connect to the nearest receiver close to you, you know, and try to and to basically turns the man to man coverage then and there especially mm -hmm. when an elite quarterback like well, Mahomes like he's not looking to you know he's not looking to slide he's not looking to <laughs> he's, he's looking for a big play he still believes in himself that he could you know scramble out of pocket and make a big play and change the game so me in my head I'm like I can make a big play too you know I can change the game too Love it. so if you see if you see like I'm guarding Sky Moore but I'm peeking Mahomes because I know he's a gunslinger so like a whole entire time, my eyes are on him. Like, you know what I mean? So like I'm feeling Sky more, but my you see no my doubt. eyes like I don't really turn to him until I'm trying to force him out of bounds. Cause you know, once once a receiver goes out of bounds, he can't 
he's not eligible yep. to touch a ball anymore. So I'm trying to do that without, you know, getting a flag, but also without losing my vision on Mahomes because, you know, he's a magician. Mm -hmm. So right now, as I see him getting closer to the sideline, I try to force Scott more closer to the sideline so I can push him out so I don't have to worry about, like, eliminate a threat. So I don't have to worry about him you know, uh, being able to catch the ball so I can focus on, you know, trying to change the game. So he steps out of bounds. I let go and I drift back and there goes the ball. And then Beautiful. I just try to just go out, go out with one I hand. Love it. Just ball out. Love it. Yeah, man. That was that was one of my favorite plays of the, you know, just being able to do that in an away game, you know, mm -hmm. and silence the crowd. That's that's something that uh, man, I'll never forget that. When you plaster the sky more and then, like you said, like you, you narrated it perfectly and you can see it like this camera angle is beautiful. The clarity of the tape, like you get your hands immediately on sky more and then your eyes are locked like dead on to Mahomes. If he, mm -hmm. if he, instead of like kind of bowing it out towards the sideline, like what, what's the point where you start to feel threatened? Like he's going to take off and you might have to try and make a play on Mahomes if he runs. Like if he kind of takes this more vertically, does that threaten you a little more? Or are you sticking plaster regardless? You, I mean, it's really a feel thing. Like for me, I, I'm not about to go and make no tackle when I'm not sure if he's past that line of scrimmage, bro. Cause that's, yeah. it, I don't care what coverage he's in. If he's the, the closest receiver to me, I have to go match him. Cause mm -hmm. if I go in there and try to go smack Mahomes, <laughs> he, he just lollipops over my head and, and he's he done it down. that's a lot yeah he and then, then you're on that highlight and it's just like right. he pops it over you so like and it'd um, be like a no look too so it'll be even worse right it would just yeah, look so he, bad he'll look off and, and he'll look in the stand <laughs> somewhere and throw it over my head and i'm I just like <laughs> they'll, they'll put it in madden and it'll be in madden and you'll just be like right. damn like that one play and all over it but anyway so right now it's on the d-line because he still hasn't crossed the the this mm -hmm. line of scrimmage and I can't see the line of scrimmage, but I can get, have a feel for it. And I think most DBs do, especially like as long as you play football. I've only been playing for about six years, but it's still. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, as you just, That's like, just Mike wild, drop yeah. that out and play. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> then, but I mean, I feel like the longer you play it, I feel like the better you, better you, 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 uh, you have a feel for it. Absolutely. The quarterback crossing the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. And so that was like, I was, I was hoping you would take you there because that was, I didn't want to ask the question directly. Like, you're obviously like you're conscious of where that line of scrimmage is and how much like that's what makes it this play by you like so good and we talked about it in the moment when we broke it down because so much of it is much like the even the play that you broke down previously on the interception on the Deontay Johnson uh, oh, yeah. attempt from Pickett like so much is is feel like it's you literally feeling Sky more and I am a homeless but then having a feel for where the where the line of scrimmage is and then recognizing the scenario and just being able to right. put it all together like how many things because from from a fan's perspective, you just drop back into coverage and then you cover Sky more and you make a play. But there were like 17 different little mini steps that led you to make that big play. And it's you're you have to be aware of so much at all times just to make that kind of play. I mean, for me, it was just like, OK, I'm connected now. Now I can mm -hmm. peek and see what the quarterback doing. If I was chasing him, there's no way in hell I would look back. at I would look back at Mahomes while he, Sky Moore has a step on me, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But, you know, since I was connected and I was chest to chest with him, I felt like I was, I could. And you had the boundary yeah. as help too. So, and you're aware of that. That's, that's what's amazing about that detail. Yeah. And I'm closer to the sideline. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. I can look back and, and see. And, but you know what I mean? I, I, if a young DB was like listening to this right now, I would never tell him to look back for the ball. If you're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're not yeah. chest to chest connected with your receiver, but. Um, I think that was something that it's just all, you know, instincts and instincts. been having a little, you know, I guess a little IQ and just really just locking in on, you know, coaching and technique and fundamentals. But I mean, it's, I don't know, it was not really rocking science. <laughs> I mean, even, even though you've only been playing six years. Yeah, not, right. Yeah, I take that, but I started eighth grade. Okay. You know what I do love though, Kyrie, and we saw in that play and you said you wouldn't, you know, teach that and use that as teach tape for DBs, but Talked about your eyes as you're plastering, you're keeping your eyes and in, in your composure on Mahomes. But we saw that in the other zone clips as well, um, which is, you know, one thing that um, when we talked about your college film versus your NFL film, I think that's one area that we saw a huge improvement in. Because, again, fans need to understand from going from a man heavy up in your face, press, press jam type of system to a zone heavy system a zone off like off zone coverage system, your eyes are just as important, if not the most important trait 
over your feet and in your athleticism. So I think that's one thing that I saw in you. Um, and we talked about it in, in the film um, d- during the season with Anthony and I did about how your, your eyes, especially your zone eyes have gotten so much better. And we saw that in these clips and we even saw it on that one that was zoned that turned to man. And I think that's one thing that fans need to understand that that's one of the more important traits when you say, so I'm sure Butler is hammering that home every day, your eye discipline, right? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And it, I think, like, it's one thing to be like, okay, my eyes need to be here, but I, my eyes need to be there. But I think anybody could do that. You mean, like, okay, I'm C2, I'm inside of one, C and two, and I got to bail, and I got to stand on top of one and be able to overlap two if he runs, like, I'm playing, if I'm playing cover three. But, like, the real money, the money is in how you – make a play on the ball, like mm-hmm. regardless okay. of whatever the scheme or technique is. I think that's where, you know, I want to continue to, to grow, you know what I mean? Just making plays on the ball and find a way, like I said, like I felt like I got a lot stronger and now especially a lot a lot more reps in the system of, you know, playing zone. But now I want to really focus on really how can I affect the game some more where I can take away the ball and get Josh back the ball so mm-hmm. we can add more points to the board. So I think – you know what I mean? That's that's my main focus right now with my fundamentals. Man, Kyer, we kept you about six minutes longer than <laughs> we thought, but we just – so Well, we appreciate, appreciate that, man. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time. And, you know, we've – myself and Eric, we actually broke down some of your tape at Florida before you were drafted by the Bills and then went heavy into overdrive once you became a Buffalo Bill and then we're breaking down your college tape throughout the offseason last year and then in season and – we like what we saw from a skill set standpoint and a trade standpoint, but you know, we, we always kept coming back to the piece of, you know, how impressed Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean were with you when they met with you at the combine and how smart of a football player you are. And just one, we appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us tonight. Yes. But man, like genuinely, like appreciate your football you IQ, your knowledge, yeah, hell yeah, man. Like it's we talk about it here all the time on the show that once you get to the NFL, like obviously you can play ball, like and you've got to be fast and strong. You got to have those physical pieces to your game. But like you talked about earlier, it's that mental side that separates right. the the math from the good and the good to the great and the great to like the Hall of Fame. And just mm-hmm. your mental game, your ability to articulate everything you were doing and the step by step pieces and just the football IQ you displayed. Like it's easy to understand why Bean and McDermott fell in love with you at the combine, just like your ability to yeah, just articulate everything you're doing on the field. And you're when you've truly mastered something, it's easy for you to explain it to other people. And yeah. it's just, you know, how you're able to break everything down, I think it really shows like a, a true mastery for you of your craft. And this was just a genuine pleasure for us to be able to talk ball with you and allow you to just display like how good you yeah, are at this game awesome and how player. much you know. That means a lot. Man. I mean, I really appreciate that. Yeah, because you didn't have to say that, but that means a lot, man. But, you know, I ain't mastered it yet. That's, that's something I want to. Yeah. That's something I, I still got to keep going, but I, I appreciate you a lot, man. That means a lot, honestly. I'm gonna keep yeah, going. Yeah, Kyer and everyone, he's you know everyone in the chat room uh, is saying the same thing. Thanks for joining us in the film room. They're completely impressed from again the shoulders up. We see the athleticism from the shoulders up. I'm glad that they got a glimpse of that and and you know in those four plays that we broke down. So with that said, man, let's get you out of here. Um, let everyone know what you got going on and. Uh, maybe where you're training, where they can find you on social media. Uh, uh, you know, now's your time. If you want to promote something, man, like drop the knowledge. Let us all know where we can find you and what you got going on, brother. Yeah, man. So really, I mean, I'm just trying to stay off social media as much as possible. I mean, be in reality, man. But, you know, you follow me on Instagram at Cinco underscore Savage 5. That's where, I mean, I post my content. Where I'm training with my trainer, Blake. I'm, I'm having a good time, you know what I mean? I'm trying to enjoy myself while I'm in South Florida um, a little bit, but really just – keeping the main thing the main thing and really trying to push myself this year, really step into a, a mode I've never been in before, really trying to be, you know, dominant this year. So, I mean, you know, I the best day of my life when I was drafted by the Bills. So, I, you know, repay everybody who, who wow. believed in me, by, you know, getting us this Super Bowl and this all pro. But, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, you guys for having me and I appreciate that a lot, man. So, Big things in store, and I can't. I can't Let's really go. Wait, Let's go. You're giving me goosebumps. All right. Let, when's the season start? Let's go. I know, right? <laughs> Not soon enough, man. Uh, yes, thank exactly. Y'all, man. Right. I it for sure. All right, no. Kyrie, you enjoy your uh, your time off before the season starts, brother. Again, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be in touch, brother. All right, we will. Thank Later, you, man. Hell yeah, man. Good stuff, man. Man, Good stuff. we. He got, got me, he got me amped. He got yeah, me. Yeah, so I was. I'm like, I'm ready. When's camp? Let's go, dude. He and and. 
you know, everything I said there at the end, like I wasn't just saying it just to say it or just to like wax poetically or whatever, like his football IQ and his football intelligence, like Mm -hmm. what also made me excited too, is like a lot of the things he said are the things that we said in the film room earlier in the year. So I was like, Oh, like where our analysis was on point. Fantastic. Uh, But his ability right away messages. Thanks for having me. No, that was awesome. man. He was so good dude. A humble dude down to Mm -hmm. earth can ball on the field. But for me, it was just like, yeah, the kind of person that he is, which is something we've said about a lot of the guests we've had in here. So it's nice that he just continues in that trend. But yeah, his football IQ, like him breaking down everything, like one is going here. So I'm looking to two and two does this, which means mm-hmm. I can do this. And I'm reading, I'm reading the tilt of the quarterback shoulders. I know. And I'm that was, that was like, a good nugget right there. Yeah. And it's like him and you can tell the way he rattled it off and broke it down that that's how he sees the game as he's playing. Yeah. It's not a front. No, no, he's actually, that's the process that he goes through on the field or off the field when studying film. Um, good stuff. And, you know, thank you to him and Poe, man. Poe vouched dude. for us. He put a good word in first. So we got to say thank you to Poe uh, for uh, getting, because I don't think that might, that was the first corner we've actually had in the film room, right? Like, yeah, we've we done a lot. Of, we've done, we, we've done wide receivers, receivers and Trent and trench work, offensive, offensive line, line defense, yeah, line, offensive, yeah. defensive line, and then safeties. But that was the first corner um that we've had in the film room and man <laughs> good luck for future corners that have to follow that in the film room like that was cool and and you know i picked those plays because again in college everyone knew coming out that he was more of a man type corner right and, and mm-hmm. his film his last year wasn't as good as the year before actually in my opinion mm-hmm. and it was because of some of the coaching and scheme changes that were going on at florida but i felt like Last year, for all that talk of him coming in as a man mirror press type man corner, he played very well in zone. A lot of his plays on the ball were actually, as we showed, in zone coverage, not just interceptions, but a lot of his PBUs as well. Yeah, and that's, you know, I loved hearing him articulate like what kind of system he came from and how he played in that system and then what kind of system he went to now Mm -hmm. and what he had to do differently and what he worked on and you know you asked him that question of when things started to click and how he pieced it all together it was a really it was a really cool look into the mind of an NFL player but from the perspective of how do you adjust to NFL life in a different system like because Eric we've Mm -hmm. talked about it so much like what he did at Florida you know, he's going to have to learn this in the NFL. Leslie Frazier talked about it last year. I think during camp or, or uh, OTAs or rookie mini camp being like, yeah. you know, we're giving Kyrie a ton of off coverage looks because that's where he's most uncomfortable right now. They put the gloves on him. So he Bang. couldn't use his hands. At exactly. camp. Remember we're at camp and they had MMA gloves on him yep. so that he couldn't grab at camp. Absolutely. Like, and just, you knew he had to make that transition, but hearing him be so aware of having to make that transition and then being able to talk about how he adapted and adjusted. And then again, by watching him towards the end of the year, like he just at the end of his rookie year, while he was fighting through some injury pieces, he just looked so much more comfortable. And you, you know, the first play against Tyreek Hill there where he gets Mm -hmm. that uh, almost gets that pick that could have led to a TD, like him talking about like, you know, now I'm able to play faster. I'm not thinking about as much. I'm, I'm not stressed as much. Like I'm reading and reacting. And if that's where he was at the end of year one, it's tremendously exciting for what he could be at the start of year two and going forward. Cause again, this is a dude who's still getting acclimated to the system. So the ceiling is still, very much a high piece for him and i'm i'm happy and excited that he the guys he was studying too yes. you know he talked about not studying necessarily receivers but studying other corners in the league studying darius slay studying james bradbury who is a guy that's very physically wise like he's very similar you know kind of that taller longer type corner stevon gilmore more of a physical guy um that kind of plays into elam skill set as well so um, it's cool to hear the guys that he studies film on because it's something, again, it's something that we do, especially during the off season. Mm. We don't just watch, you know, Bill's players, but we watch other players, good players at, or top players at other positions on other teams, because that kind of resets our eye resets our, especially when we're talking evaluation and comparisons. Um, it's something that we do in the off season and, it just helps when we get into the season. So then we, you know, not rank, but, yeah. you know, put them in the proper buckets. Hey, this was a good play versus, hey, that, that was an okay play. It was an average play. So um, it's cool to hear the guys that he's studying it and, you know, maybe what we can, uh, we can 
he can take away from watching those guys um, throughout the season. And I love that piece too, like where how he led into it to, or followed up that point. Like he named the corners that he studied, but then at the back end, right, he talked about like he really tape for him was really just studying his opponents. But then he mm -hmm. got to the NFL it was now like no, let me study more people who play my position to see yeah. what I can do. And I and I love the line that he used, like the, a lot of these corners that he named, he was like, they're a little older, but they're like their game, like the technical piece of their game has gone up. And that's how you stay in this league, right? Yeah. You, you don't stay strong as hell forever. You don't stay fast as hell forever. Like you stay in this game by knowing how to play this game, your technique, your leverage, even him talking about what he was doing uh, yeah. to influence Kenny Pickett there. Like him already thinking in that mindset, granted the Bills defense allows him to operate in that way, which is a kudos to the defense, but his mental game just to understand that side of it and already be thinking about the Jedi mind tricks of football and what he can do. Like, and then you add it, of course, the length and the size and the speed and the frame. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like the stuff that comes naturally. Yes. Man. That's what I'm saying. That's what's yes. so exciting about year two and year three with him, because again, he's got, all the physical tools, but now he's starting to, again, it's starting to click when it comes to scheme technique and assignment on top of his study and understanding of opposing players and, and route concept, like little by little it's coming together and, and why his, and that's why we're so excited about his ceiling, right? His ceiling as a player. Um, and you know, the competition, it's still a competition though. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's be honest here. It's still a competition, but I, I, we're not the only ones. I'm sure a lot on the staff, whether you're talking coaches and the front office are rooting for this guy. And you can see why he's got it all. It's just putting it together consistently is what it's going to take. And uh, I mean, I, I know we just had him on the show, but I have high hopes and, and I do believe that he does start to put it all together and become more consistent and really just find his niche and find his uh, baseline play and consistency um, to secure that job. Um, you know, for the long run. I, I mean, that's what I'm hoping and I'm thinking is going to happen uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, you know, he was a high ceiling player for a reason. And, you know, the, the sentiments that were echoed by us on the show was like, man, just imagine what he can be when things start to click or if they start to click or when they start to click, whatever verbiage you wanted to use. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, he's got those physical pieces. He got the traits. He's got the skill set. And man, yeah, just it was exciting to see what he did towards the end of the year on tape. But to be able to sit down and get this, you know, personal interaction with him and really understand how he sees the game and how he approaches the game. It, it's, it's hard, Eric, to not see how he presented himself tonight. And then you add it up with what he has physically and not mm -hmm. think that this dude's going to be some kind of something like, yeah, that was a good one. That was a, a great film room. And uh, one that um, definitely is going to go down as one of the, the better interviews. Um, and, and I'm not surprised. The guy you know, with his legacy and, and and family members that have come through the league, again, it wasn't it wasn't just PR stuff when the Bills drafted him. You know, he's really that dude. You know, he's yeah. really that dude. He's really trained physically and mentally to be a pro. And it, again, and now it's just him living it and him experiencing it and him getting those reps on and off yeah. the field. No, we appreciate all the comments too. You guys have been great tonight, and uh, I know we couldn't get to all of your questions, but. Uh, we wanted to sneak some of ours in there as well yeah. when it came to to the X's and O's and the the football stuff. When he was diving into it, like I almost wanted to just be like, "Tell me more, Kyer." And go just on, like, yeah. just go on. <laughs> Do tell, please. <laughs> like, yeah, man, he he absolutely crushed it. And again, major kudos to you for uh, setting it up and being able to uh, you know work through the yeah. Right real and, quick, and I told Anthony, but I had to go through an interview to get. <laughs> him for an interview his dad abram had me on the phone explaining yeah. things i had to show them what um you know what plays and what we're going to talk about because um it, it just there's a lot that goes into it and if you're talking football you know they don't know they don't really know us he says you know he watches our stuff and all that but i understand but man they put me through a background check basically to get kair but i'm and again and it's a huge huge uh shout out to poe for again uh vouching for us as well Oh, that's Let's a cool comment. Here. No, we appreciate it, Eptide. He says, sometimes we forget we're not actually on the field playing and coaching. Thank you for this insider view of what really happens out there. And that's, again, we talk about it at the end of every show. We try to bring, you know, a little different angle, a different perspective to the game. It's a complex game. I know 
Monday morning quarterbacking is so easy to do and a simple five yard out route, a simple vertical route, a simple cover two call seems simple, but really there's a lot that goes into it. You saw that and heard that tonight from Kair Elam. So um, we're, we love these episodes. We love these film room sessions more than any other ones because we get to, you know, we're able to get into the mind of the players um, on some of these simple plays. Like you said, like, was it as simple as you thought it was? Like, right. there's a lot of, you say it, it was simple, but all these other things you had to process before the ball was even snapped to lead to that high point interception in a simple cover two call. So um, we appreciate that super fan, that super chat. And uh, Ab's always with us too. He's always in the film room with us and, and a lot of our uh, shows on the network. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here and for the super chat. And yeah, thank you to everybody for the kind words, uh, the kind words for Kair, which is first and foremost, awesome. It, it's, it's tremendous to be able to bring in a guest and see the appreciation, you know, exuded from the chat. So major thank you to uh, everybody for doing that tonight. And then also the kind words for myself and Eric. And yeah, it was just, this was an awesome episode. And so major thank you to, again, to you, Eric, for setting it up and putting yourself through the ringer and going through a 70 step interview process. And speaking of more awesome things and speaking of things that, you know, have to deal with process, Eric, is there some kind of process where if you wanted to further expand your knowledge of the Buffalo bills or football in general and get like early insider information to some breaking news pieces or pieces that don't even see the light of day publicly mm -hmm. where, what is there some kind of process you could engage in to maybe like do that? Like discover one have something like that. Yes. Yes. You can oh. become an insider, get to cover one dot football and uh, you sign up. It's our premium content. So there's some content on the site written content that's behind the paywall that is only for our insiders, for our subscribers. Um, when you do sign up, you get a, a t-shirt, you get a decal. Um, that's going to actually be changing soon. We're going to do a, a, a new t-shirt and decal every year. Uh, we got a meeting on that coming up. Uh, but more importantly, become part of the Cover One community with our Slack channel. For all of our subscribers, um, you get a link to our, our, our private uh, Slack channel. And in there, we have film rooms, we have analytics channels, we have just Guys, I want to talk football all the time. Um, and so uh, we've built a really nice community. Um, it's one of the things I'm most proud about at Cover One is, you know, we have a lot of brothers and sisters now um, because of our insiders. So uh, it's 57 bucks for the year. Uh, and, and so when you sign up for that, you get, again, you get a lot of behind the scenes content. And in a lot of these stories that break, um, we've broken them for our insiders mm -hmm. in the Slack channel. We don't, uh, put a lot of stuff out. We don't put everything out mm -hmm. onto social media or onto the website. So um, join the group, become an insider at cover one dot football. It's uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. You know, the telestration, uh, the stats, um, how we're live literally right now, like all of this is paid for by our subscribers, by our insiders, by you guys on YouTube or, you know, listening later in, in podcast platform or podcast uh, format, um, liking it subscribing, leaving us a comment. It's uh, incredibly important, right? Ant? It's super important. And, you know, sign up for that one pass piece, take advantage of the information that could be potentially available to you at your fingertips. But like Eric said, it's, it's one of the many forms of support that we're truly and tremendously grateful for and thankful for. Um, just like in the variety of forms, like with this episode, like everybody who joined us live, like we thank you so much for that. If you didn't join us live and you're watching later, we appreciate you for watching later. If you're listening on one of the podcasting apps or platforms, that's awesome too. Any and every ounce of support, even just literally like a simple word of mouth of telling somebody who's also a Bills fan, like, yo, you should check out Cover One. Or you ever watch the Cover One film? Room? Like little pieces like that, like they used to do in the old days before um, paper was a thing and you <laughs> yeah. had to pass information purely by story. Word of mouth, a, a carrier pigeon, whatever. Like exactly. whatever yeah. you got to do yeah. to, to spread the word for us. Uh, <laughs> it goes a long long way guys yeah buy yourself some pigeons and write down cover one on a bunch of little tiny pieces of parchment and put it to the pigeon's foot and then let them fly free whatever you got to do we appreciate the hell out of you folks and we appreciate you folks appreciating us again thank you very much for tuning in whether you are live or post live audio video whatever have you if you are here on youtube live or post live please drop a like on this video like eric mentioned likes are the lifeblood of these streams especially for an episode that we're truly proud of um and we would love to see 
reach as many eyes and ears as, as possible. So if you're here on YouTube, please drop a like on this video. It goes a long way. If you're on one of the podcasting apps or platforms, please rate and review the channel. Subscribe as well. That helps with those pieces and helps us really get to the forefront. Subscribe on YouTube as well to the Cover One Film Room and to the Cover One brand as a whole. We have you covered pretty much every single day. Well, yeah. now literally six days a week with content. <laughs> and then there's other videos that are uploaded and added. So on any given week, there's seven days in a week. You have at a minimum, usually like seven to eight pieces of content every single week in an episode format, let alone more, depending on what's going on or what's happened in the world. So we got you covered with anything and everything you need for the Buffalo Bills and teach you a little bit of something uh, about the game of football as a whole while we're at it. So again, Thank you, folks, for everything. We appreciate you. Tell your family and friends and loved ones how awesome this show was and how awesome Kyer Elam was as a guest and how smart Mm -hmm. he is. We will see you next week live Wednesday, June 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern for another episode of the – Little tease, little tease. We're working Daquan Jones back into the rotation. (sighs) Can't do it next week. He's on vacation, but we're going to – before camp starts, he's back in the film room with us. We're going to be talking run stopping, so – just something to look forward to, guys. Just something to look forward to. <laughs> no super funny peek behind the curtain. After this episode, I was going to be like, that was great. Should we DM Daquan again and see if he wants to come back? So it's just beautiful. Another uh, previous guest of the film room who crushed it the last time he was on. So somebody um, we're definitely pumped to have back. He's a good social media presence as well. Always yes. good in front of the camera. So keep that little nugget in the back of your brains. Um, we'll see what we got planned for you next week, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, for another episode of the Cover One Film Room. But until then, I am Anthony Prohaska. That's Eric Turner. Take care of each other. Be kind to one another. We hope you and your family and friends and loved ones are all doing well and staying safe. Godspeed. And as always, go Bills.